Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The AI revolution is happening right now. Google, OpenAI and Meta are developing generative AI models which can do more and more every day. Nvidia and AMD are developing the cutting edge chips and GPUs to power these models. But there is a problem. We are running out of power and computing infrastructure to sustain the development of generative AI. Every AI model from Google's Gemini to Meta's Llama and OpenAI's GPT require a massive physical infrastructure called an AI data center that hosts all the GPUs and compute nodes. These aren't just server farms, they are multi-billion dollar gigawatt consuming energy beasts. The industry needs significant infrastructure for the next phase of AI development and right now only one company has the balance sheet and the integrated power grid to do it, and that is Brookfield Corporation. Today I'm breaking down why Brookfield Corporation is the best positioned to build the backbone of AI, why its CEO Bruce Flatt believes why we are not building enough data centers, a bubble is forming among their competitors, and how they are future-proofing their business against advancement in GPU technology. As I mentioned, I believe Brookfield is the best position between all of the AI data center builders like Iron, Nibius, Bitfarms, Hive, Broadcom, Corviv, and Hot8 to deliver massive projects across the world, particularly in the United States and for hyperscalers like Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon. Here's why I believe that. The enormous scale of modern AI data centers like those demanded by hyperscalers isn't just a technical challenge, it's both a capital and power logistic challenge. Data centers require approximately 1 gigawatt of power today, they also require significant capital close to 50 billion dollars to build and maintain. When you look at the 50 billion dollar investment required for some of these projects and the gigawatts of power needed, you realize this isn't a job for a startup or a depth-loaded company. This is a job for a global infrastructure powerhouse, a role Brookfield is uniquely positioned to fill, especially with its massive renewable energy and transmission assets. Bruce Flatt, the CEO of Brookfield Corporation, participated in an interview with CNBC this week, and the interviewer asks Bruce about building too many data centers and whether or not this is a bubble. Here is Bruce Flatt's response. Oh, uh... The, the data centers used to be, when we built data centers 10 years ago, they were 50, 100 megawatts. Today, we have customers taking a thousand, one gigawatt from us for one data center. So these were enormous uh, amounts of power required and the capital, why this is, can only be done by a certain few, is the capital for that, if you take a thousand megawatts or one gigawatt of power, the building and the infrastructure and the chips and the servers that go inside of it for an AI factory is $50 billion. This is a lot of money, so it can't be done by everyone. There's few, but not that many, and it's highly sophisticated, and people always talk about, um, is there uh, too much? Too many uh, data centers? Too many. Is it, is, people ask, are there too is many? It, and uh, some people think it's a bubble. It's not, and it isn't, because it's hard to do this. Everyone says they're going to build something, it's not easy to build. You need to find the connectivity, you need to find the power, you need to build the buildings, you have to get the chips, and you need to have 50 billion per AI factory. This is not, this can't be done by everybody. And he don't believe the need for data centers is a bubble itself, as we are not building enough data centers to enable the generative AI models to meet their huge demand. But he also believes that a lot of data center builders might not be able to deliver what they promised to. So the rush to start a business in building data centers might be in a bubble. It's actually very interesting. He said everybody is saying they're building AI data centers, but it's not that easy. He basically is saying that not all of these companies that turn their businesses into data center builders are going to be successful in building and delivering the data center. For example, we have a lot of Bitcoin miner companies that change their business models completely and now they focus on building data centers for AI companies. It's not easy for them to build new data centers because of the scale of these projects. 
Building mining rigs for Bitcoin mining on the surface is similar to building AI data centers as both require power, shelves, servers, and GPUs or TPUs, but in reality, it is very different to build these massive data centers. It's not only about building the infrastructure for servers, it's about supplying enough power and deploying enough capital to provide the required infrastructure for data centers. Simply, the difference is in the scale, and not every company can complete such a massive infrastructure and power projects. The distinction Flat makes is the key. He separates the demand, which is huge and real, from the supply, which is speculative. The demand for AI data centers is absolutely real, driven by massive secular shifts in AI. The bubble is in the ability to execute. A former Bitcoin miner or a small developer simply doesn't have the balance sheet, the political relationship, the long-term project management expertise, or most critically, the integrated power solution required to deliver a multi-gigawatt facility. Brookfield, on the other hand, owns the infrastructure, they can pair their data center development with their own renewable energy and transmission projects, solving the single largest bottleneck for AI growth. This combination gives Brookfield a competitive mode against less integrated builders. In the next part, Bruce Flat is discuss discussing the credit rating of these hyperscalers, companies like Google, Meta, and Amazon. Remember, most of these are being contracted to the major technology companies. And they all today have credit better than most countries in the world. And therefore, your credit counterparties are almost as good or better than a U.S. Treasury. When the interviewer shifts to the credit rating of hyperscalers, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta, Bruce's point is crucial. These companies all have investment-grade credit ratings. Some of them are better than the U.S. government itself. Why does that matter for a data center builder? Because when Brookfield signed a 10 to 20 year agreement with a customer like Microsoft or Google, they are essentially securing revenue backed by one of the strongest balance sheets in the world. This allows Brookfield to borrow capital cheaply, confidently finance a multi-billion dollar build, and generate a stable utility-like returns on a digital asset. The contract is as good as gold. This is something a small, speculative developer cannot easily access. The next question is about sustainability of these data centers and whether or not the technology will obsolete in a couple of years. But one thing I hear sometimes is that we're building so many data centers. First of all, they take a really long time to come to fruition. And second of all, the, the technology will change and get more efficient. And then will we be stuck you're with not, too many? You're not building enough data centers, first point. Second. The, the data centers, the shell, the chips are inside, they go away in five years. You amortize those in five years. So that, that, uh, that will go away and the chips are going are to change, and you're, you'll, but you've amortized them in five years. So we're not building enough. As much as we're building today, we're not even building half of what we can, and it, you can't build enough. Like, I actually have the opposite. Um, Why do you say that? I, I have the opposite answer for you is yeah. the countries in the world uh, used to build roads and railways and say what they need to build is AI infrastructure and if you do not in a, in a country if you do not have sovereign and AI infrastructure to be able to lay the pipe for your companies they will leave and that okay Bruce's response here is that while the chips themselves I mean GPUs and TPUs will evolve rapidly the physical infrastructure the land the building the shells, the power connection, the fiber optic lines, and most importantly, the cooling and power delivery systems is the long-term asset. The key to future-proofing here is modular design. Brookfield is focused on building data centers that allow for quick and relatively cheap upgrades, enabling them to swap out older generations of racks and GPUs for the next generation. They are building a 50-year piece of infrastructure to house a three to five-year piece of technology, and that requires an infrastructure mindset, not a technology mindset. In conclusion, Bruce Flat comments reinforce that this is a game of a scale, capital, and execution. Brookfield's deep pockets, integration with massive power infrastructure, focus on long-term, credit-backed contracts with world's most robust tech giants, position them as the potential winner in this new era of AI infrastructure build-out. 
Finally, let's revisit Brookfield valuation after the stock split using Yara IQ discounted future earnings calculator. If you want to access to this software, my real-time buys and sells, my brand new Patreon portfolio, and a like-minded community to discuss stocks, you can join my Patreon right now, and for only 14 Canadian dollars per month, you get instant access to all these tools and future updates of the software. Click the link below to join today. I think you will love it. And if not, you can easily cancel your membership. Let's get back to Brookfield valuation. I will use distributable earnings as my valuation metric here, as this is the base metric to value at Brookfield business. I put my expected rate of return to be 14% to give myself a little bit margin of safety with Brookfield. Then in the bear case, I consider the company has a little bit of distributable earnings margin compression, only 12% growth in the short term, 10% in the mid term, and 8% in the long term. And I consider the terminal multiple of 14. In the normal case, I consider a normal margin, 15% growth in the short term, 14% in the mid term, and 13% in the long term and a thermal multiple of 18, which is a normal multiple for Brookfield. In the bull case, I considered a 20% short-term growth, 17% mid-term, and 14% long-term growth, and a thermal multiple of 22, which is a bull multiple. Now, if I hit calculate, the software will give me some valuable information about the stock based on my assumptions. The intrinsic value of Brookfield stock is between 25 US dollar in the bear case, an 81 US dollar in the bull case, with a 50 US dollar as the fair value of the stock, which compared to the current share price of Brookfield Corporation, which is 46 US dollar, it means the stock is currently trades for a 9% discount and it is a buy today. Overall, the AI infrastructure race is just beginning and Brookfield Corporation is laying the foundations. And in my opinion, they are in the best position to take advantage of this AI boom. Thanks for watching. That's it for this episode, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.